Hello. My name is Gillian Johnston. This is the fourth live workshop in the Bouts Art School Online. I hope you've been enjoying it. This is Unfiltered Views. So today we'll be looking at the Bouts framed and filtered, how he framed and filtered his work. So I'll talk through that in a moment. We'll be making a viewfinder and then we'll be having a go at sketching, which will be exciting. So you'll need, if you haven't got them already in front of you, paper, drawing materials, scissors, and that's about it really. You can get something to take some photographs as well if you want to, but that's not necessary. So this is the painting that we've been talking about. I'm sure you've seen this a few times. This is a painting by Duick Bouts. It's St. Luke drawing the Virgin and Child. And what I really love about this painting, I think it's really interesting for a few reasons. The first reason is that he's exposing a bit of what happens behind the scenes when you're creating a painting. So he is drawing the Virgin and Child, but they're not yet the Virgin and Child, are they? They're a woman and a baby in a setting. So he is exposing that process of creating an icon, which I find really interesting. And he's exposing what he's kind of doing to this Virgin and Child, setting them up, framing them, cropping them. Um, composing them to create them into this idol which I find really interesting and I'll, I'm also really interested in how this relates to us today how do we how do we crop our work our pictures our images how do we compose them we don't do them in the same way as Derek Belts did we don't paint them we don't draw them but what we do do is we take photographs, don't we? And we take lots of photographs. So how do we... And photographs are supposed to be really accurate to real life, aren't they? They are. You just point and click. Or do you? What do you do to your photographs before you share them? Before you put them on the wall? Before you pin them? Do you crop them? You might add a filter or two. I'm really interested in how we create our images what we put in what we include and what we leave out what do you crop out what's around the edges that's not in the middle of the frame but actually is still really important to your life it still says a lot about you as a person what did he have around these edges and how much of this is really real? Is this what his studio really looks like? I really doubt that this is what his studio really looks like. There are a few bits here. This is probably the most accurate part, that tiny little section in the corner. In the margins, where is the most accurate bit where you can see very, very faintly some little shells he will have used to mix paints. But this bit, this bit's framed. This bit's fantasy, this bit's made up. He added that because that's the sort of ideal. That's what he would have liked it to look like. But he was in the Netherlands. It wouldn't be cold. There wouldn't have been a nice hot seaside or townscape behind him. It would have been freezing. Probably didn't have windows like that. It would have been too cold and windy. So I find that really interesting. I want you to have a little bit of a think now about what you crop out of your images, what you leave out and what you include. What do you airbrush over? And what do you not? What do you enhance? I find that really interesting. So we're going to have a go now at making a viewfinder. So you're going to need your paper here like this and a pair of scissors. And if you're feeling like it really needs to be very accurate, then you can use a ruler as well to measure the size. But I'm not going to. What you're going to do first is get your paper and you're just going to fold it in half like this. See, have you done that? There we go. And then you're literally just going to cut a square out the middle like this. As accurately as you can. 
but it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine's not going to be perfect. Viewfinders are great because they help you compose your image. You're adding a frame around something. So you can sort of see what you're going to include within your frame, the framing up your image. Like this. I'll frame my face. So we're going to have a go, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to frame my face here. There we go. Does that, would that make a good picture? You can see how you can frame things. Maybe that one. Maybe leave me out. Do the picture instead. <laughs> so, when you've got one of these, I'd like you to have a look around your room, what you're in, but not the middle of your room. What do you place in the corners, in the margins, but actually... They say a lot about your life, about who you are as a person. So we're going to go and take a trip around my kitchen, because that's where I am right now. And I'm going to show you some of the corners of my room. And we're going to hope this goes well and less wobbly than last time. Make sure I've put away everything that I don't want you to see. <laughs> Not really. I'm being quite accurate here. So I've come over here by this window. This is what I've shoved in the corner. But I think actually some of this stuff here is quite important to me. So I'll just show you what we've got here. You can see framed up nicely is my flowers and a candle and some of my cookery books. It's a bit ironic, I'm not a very good cook really. Over here, this is probably a bit more telling and this is the this will be the image that we're going to explore today because I think this says a little bit more about me and my life. I'll just show you over here. This is the my arty corner where I pin up. It's just in the corner, just out the way. It's not my main framed pictures that I put in the middle of the room, but they're actually probably more important to me so I'll flick through a couple of those pictures again that we saw. There we go, we're back again, back safe. I hope it wasn't too wobbly. And I'll show you some of these. So this is the first picture I showed you. So this was in the corner of my room, but I do love flowers. And actually I've included a little candle on here. And that does mean a lot to me, that little candle, or those little candles that I put over there, because I do light them on special occasions. Yeah, if I'm thinking of somebody um, special, I'll find another one. That was the image that we're going to work on today over here. Because I think that's that corner of the room really is the junk corner. It, well, it's not junk at all. Because it's where I put up my children's pictures and where I keep my creative materials. And here's the last image here. This is actually from another room. But again... It's all pushed away in the corner, but I've got my candles there and I've got a picture, a very special picture of my granddad. So have a look yourself. I wonder what have you had a look at in your room and what have you put into your viewfinder or frame? I wonder as well what, and I'll challenge you now, you can post in the comments if you want. What, what do you think? What do you think about the stuff I showed you about my room, about those corners? Can you read anything about me? What can you guess that I kind of like? What can you guess about maybe the other people who live in my house because I don't live here alone? Or what, can, what do you think? What do you think? What can you guess about me? Not too much, I hope. <laughs> what a challenge there. <laughs> but yeah. So this is the picture here, which I'll show you again, that I'm going to talk you through drawing that one with my camera and my children's drawings and my paintbrushes. Because I think it's, it's quite a nice dynamic one to look at. And we're going to have a go now at sketching and drawing. What I've done first to help us and to help me start, is I've done a quick wash. Now you don't have to do this, you can just go straight away with your pens and your pencils, 
but I did. I did a little bit of a sketch and a wash to help me sort of get started on here, which you can do too if you want to, but you don't have to. And now I'm just going to get started sketching over the top of it. So I've got a pen here. Ah, uh, somebody says I'm very creative. I like that. Yes, I am. I am very creative. That's what that was my creative corner of the room, the messy junk area where I shove everything. <laughs> so I've got my pen here and I'm going to start it, start just drawing some lines and shading. So this, these parts here, the smudgy parts are done with wet on wet, so they've bled quite nicely. This bit's done as a block painting. Yeah, and I've let I've let some areas seep in and give a bit of shadow. But I'm going to make do most of my shadow with a pen and with a pencil and some charcoal. So we'll start just by making some marks, refining. I am actually looking at, because my view that I've chosen is right in front of me. So while I'm doing this for you here, I'm also looking at the actual object, which is what Bounce would have done as well. He didn't have pictures and photographs to work from. He'll have worked very much from life. And we do know through x-rays of the painting that he was a very, very skilled draftsman. He was a very, very precise drawer and all his paintings were underpinned by some very good draftsman work. So that's what we're gonna practise now. Now I'm using a pen, but you might want to start with a pencil. I've already done all of that bit with mine. I add a bit of shading on here. So I'm just now loosely starting to make some tentative marks on here. I've already scaled this, sketched it out. It didn't take me long, this. This under, I suppose, under drawing, if you like, um, probably only took 10 minutes. Just a quick, very, very loose lines with the wash on the top. So the most of the work is going to happen now. So I'm just starting off getting some shading. I hope you can see quite clearly. I know this is this is quite a small pen. I will go in there with a larger pen so you'll click, be able to see a lot more clear. And all the buttons. I'm cross-hatching here as well, that's where you make marks that go cross over each other like that. So the, the rule of thumb with cross-hatching is that the more lines that you make, the darker it's going to be. So there's a, quite a dark section around here, so I'm, they're building up some of these cross-hatching sections. Right, now I'm going to do start doing this part here a central sort of eye if you like it's like an eye looking at you <laughs> i wonder if this camera is my gaze in my picture the gaze was quite important um, you might not know what i'm talking about with when i'm talking about the gaze so each portrait if you make a portrait it's got a look that looks out at you so i'm looking at the camera now and the gaze is sort of the, the mood of the sitter that's looking at you, the viewer. So what kind of gaze is my kind of cold camera going to give out? Is it going to be quite a clinical gaze? So that means, um, is it quite cold or is it quite warm? Is it inviting? Is it dreamy? <laughs> My camera's not going to be dreamy, I'm supposed, I think it's going to be a lot more clinical. But I find that quite interesting, how my painting, my picture is going to look out at you guys, the viewer, through a camera lens. You get some of this shading in here. So you can see as I'm doing lines, I'm sort of building up my picture, building up the volume to it. I'll give these around here. A bit more of a definition. I'm going to make this bit in more shadow. I will go over with a larger pen at some point but I think you need your sort of, these are what I kind of describe as the hairy lines. Hairy lines are really, it's kind of my word for it, it's not a technical word. They're the words, they're what you use to feel out your picture. So I'm, I'm just gauging kind of where different sections are going to be. 
and I'm not committing myself to one bold mark. I'm doing a hairy line that's tentative. It's non-committal. I've got quite a lot of them on there, so. So when I've kind of done with one bit, I'm gonna keep with one pen for now. I'm, I am gonna swap in a minute and do something else, but I'm gonna try and spread this pen out across the rest of my picture. I hope you're having a go drawing with me. You can use a pencil as well. When I start a picture, usually I um, I will use reference points to help me compose it. So this is my frame in here and halfway down about there is where I want this seat of the camera to go. So I've used a reference point within my picture. Some people grid up. I grid up sometimes. When you use a grid, you use lots of lines and you almost divide your painting into squares to help you draw the picture. I don't grid up very often, but I sometimes do. It sometimes saves time. Um, I usually like to use reference points in my picture to help me. I'm going to get a bit of energy into here, so I'm going to go in at the points that aren't central to my picture. This is like my central point here. I might use more sketchy lines and marks, give it a bit more energy. So an energetic mark is where you're sort of quite furiously doing things quickly and speedily so you've got a lot of energy in there. I'm going to get a bit of this jar in at the bottom, I think. You'll see this quite clearly because this bit's quite light. Some of your lines can go round. If an object's round, you're best off making your curved lines go round too slightly. So following that curve, it just pulls out the shape a little bit. So I've got my paint brushes here. And I'm just going to very loosely put them in. I'm going to go over them with a bit more um, confidence in a minute. I'm just getting them sketched out. A large bit there. And then there's my ruler that comes all the way down here. Hmm. Getting there. We're getting there. So I think I'm quite happy with what I've done with this pen and I'm going to move along now. I might come back to it. It's the lovely thing about drawing. This is a thicker pen, so this is going to help me really define my lines and start getting, pulling something out of this, getting some real energy going. So I'm going to start up here. It will give it a more cartooned effect, this. But it'll also really help you see what I'm doing. You can really start seeing parts of this camera coming out with my nice thick chunky pen. Sort of coming out there slightly. So you can see I've now committed to those marks there. And give this a bit of energy. Just like this. So this is my strap. Comes down. As you're drawing, be quite, at this point, when you're refining your picture, be quite considered with your marks. So yes, I'm going fast, I'm trying to put some energy into it. But I've also, this is the third time I've gone over that line, I'm really committed to it now. So think about your drawing as like that first time, even if it's a pencil. So the first time you go over it, you're going to be tentative. The second time, you're going to be more confident. 
And your third time that you go over that line, you're really committed to it. You've really sort of felt it out. And you're, your sort of frayed lines will help you with that because your mind will naturally put that third and final line in the place where it, it, wanted, it, it is the most accurate place. And you want to keep on looking back to your reference picture or your still life. Keep on going back to that. And also have fun with it. Who says what a picture needs to look like should look like? If you are happy with your picture and how it looks, don't let anybody else tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody else tell you, oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, maybe you could do this instead. If you like it, stand by what you're doing and play with it, have fun with it, because that's what it's all about. It's about enjoying what you do, enjoying and having a go, having a play. It's all I think I do every day. It's amazing. All I just play all day. Play with marks, play with lines. Play with being creative. Right, in a moment. So that's, this is, this is quite, this is my marker pen. It's quite thick. It's very committed. I'm going to get out a different type of medium now. That's charcoal. I love charcoal. Charcoal's so much fun. So charcoal, you can sort of move it around. It's fab. So you can you can make a bit of shaded area. You can even make smudged marks with your finger. So I've put a bit on my finger there. I'm going to make some smudged marks around this trunk. And this is Millie's drawing that I'm starting to add a few details to in the background. This is my ruler. This is quite a focal point to my picture. Provides that other diagonal line. Might go over that again with a marker pen. But we'll see. When you're drawing, it's all about those little decisions that you make. Charcoal has a lot of energy to it. You really have to sort of move your hands around. It's best done when you're standing up and when you're covering a big area. Charcoal is fantastic for that kind of drawing. Don't try with charcoal to limit yourself to a tiny little. This size paper is not great for charcoal. What you want with charcoal is a big sheet of paper. Even this, I would say A3 is sort of the, the smallest you want to work with charcoal. I would say... A1 is a really good size. Be brave with it. And charcoal is made to sort of move around, be smudged, making different kind of marks like this. So Millie's drawing, she's got lots of leaf shapes. So I'm just rolling my charcoal there so that it's making a different kind of mark. Um, so I think I'm nearly there with this, but not quite. It's just a quick sketch, so I want to keep that speed about what I'm doing. Let me go a bit on the camera over here. Get some bits really standing out. Right, I'm going to go back to the pen for a second. And I'm going to get back in here with the pen. I think I have over darkened this area. But you know what, that's okay. Because when you sketch something, I've done this sketch probably three times now. Sometimes you get to the point where it's too familiar and you lose some of the things about it. It is good though to draw things more than once because you find that you get better and better. Yeah, I'm going to put some lines down there. So I think that's as far as I'm going to go with that painting today, with that picture. I'll keep it in the 
sidelines so you can have a look. There's a few things I'm not quite happy with. I did over darken that pit in the end. But you know what? That's a good thing about drawing. It's not final. It's not your final painting. It's going to emerge. It's going to change. It's going. It's quite fluid. Yeah. It's that those playful marks, that playing with ideas, that immediate immediacy, and that's why I love that bouts that we can see all of his under drawings um, when you put the X-ray on because you can see they're quite. He's really, he's really drafted this. He's drawn before he started. So I find that quite interesting. I wonder how many other drawings he did. So, this is the end really of, of, my, of chatting to you. I hope you've enjoyed it and hope you've thought about lots of different things that we've discussed. Um, we do have creativity packs to give away to young people aged 13 to 25, which contain everything you need to have a go with this workshop. Um, they're free packs, and if you want to order one, you just go online to the Bose Museum website and evaluate and download the evaluation. So you do this by clicking Learn at the top. You click on Young People, then Bouts Art School Week 3, and then Share week four sorry share about hashtag about art school and next week we're looking at perspective with Carlos Kotz so I, I'm really looking forward to that and you will be too so with that please share with us your artwork, artwork please do because I would be interested to see it as well at hashtag about art school and enjoy, enjoy playing with drawing, playing with marks, framing different things. You know what, your photographs might become your final pieces for this. You can just share with us a photograph. So have a go, have a play, and hopefully see you next time. Bye.